We're leaving Australia and heading over the Pacific to the USA and the sunny state of California. Over the next three episodes, we'll visit three popular sites. Our first stop being Malibu, about a 40 minute drive from downtown LA. Over the next 25 minutes, we'll explore two locations here, starting at Legacy Park. Let's see what birds we can find on a typical visit. The park was initially developed as a stormwater and urban runoff project, covers about 15 acres. Of course, wherever there's plant life and water, there's going to be some birds. Legacy Park is an excellent place to get really close to some of California's common bird life. Mallard ducks are the most common and recognisable wild ducks in the Northern Hemisphere. And an interesting fun fact about them is the mallard is the ancestor of nearly all domestic duck breeds, except the Muscovy duck. The pied-billed grebe is the most common grebe in these parts. It is named pied-billed because during the summer months, its bill turns to a silver colour with a black ring around it. Like all grebes, they are great swimmers and divers, and will dive underwater as soon as they see anything that they think is a threat. This one had a couple of chicks, which were also fun to watch. One of my favourite little birds to watch was the Black Phoebe. They kind of reminded me of a willy wagtail back home. They weren't shy around people and they were easy and fun to photograph.
We are now leaving Legacy Park and heading five minutes across the road to Malibu Lagoon, one of the city's best bird watching spots, with over 300 species having been recorded. There's some great bird watching to be had here, including migratory and non-migratory shorebirds, as well as some other birds you'd find along the saltwater marsh. When you first enter, you will follow a trail along the lagoon's edge. Keep a close eye on the edge of the water. If you look very closely, you might see the very well camouflaged green heron. These birds are very closely related to the striated heron and can be found throughout a lot of North and Central America. The green heron uses tools, being one of the few bird species to do so. Here we see it dropping feathers and twigs into the water in order to attract small fish. It didn't catch any while I was there, but it sure was giving it a red hot go. Along the paths and boardwalks near the entrance, you'll see plenty of rabbits, as well as some of the smaller birds, and some common water birds. The double-crested cormorant is the most widespread and common cormorant species in North America. Populations of these birds really suffered in the 1900s. In the 1920s, the cormorants were killed and generally disliked. It is thought they consumed too many fish. And then in the 1960s, populations really declined when the pesticide DDT was used. Once the use of DDT ended, and the government made laws to protect wild birds, the cormorants began to thrive again. And now they can be found wherever there is water across most of North America. Eventually you'll walk to the point where the Malibu Creek meets the Pacific Ocean. 
This little bit of beach is perfect for watching some shorebirds. And at different times of year, there'll be different shorebirds here. Here's what I could find on a misty September morning. I'm pretty sure I got most identifications correct, but I'm not from this part of the world. So if there is anything wrong, let me know in the comments and I'll update it in the YouTube description. I was keen to see some North American plovers on this trip. Probably the easiest one to find, and the noisiest, is this, the killdeer. In fact, these birds make so much noise, they've been known by a couple of other names in the past, including chattering plover and noisy plover. And their scientific name, vociferous, roughly translates to shouting or yelling. The American crow is the most common crow over much of the USA and Canada. It can be easily separated from the common raven, as the raven is a much larger bird, with a longer, thicker bill. These crows do really well in urban environments, so you're most likely to find one wherever you're travelling.
Ruddy turnstones can be found on shorelines throughout the world. They get their name because they use their wedged shaped bills to turn over rocks and seaweed, hoping to find small sand hoppers or crustaceans. One little bird that gets special attention on this beach is the near-threatened snowy plover. They have a nice fenced-off section where they can lay their eggs without worrying about people trampling all over them. But as is typical with these birds, they were found nowhere near the fenced-off section. The closer you look at this clip, the more snowy plovers you will find. They are just so cute. One of the most adorable birds I saw was this neat semi-parmated plover. These are small compact little shorebirds with a short stubby bill, a round head and beautiful large eyes. They spend their breeding months in Northern America and go to Southern South America for the winter. Now we'll go from one of the smallest birds in the lagoon to the largest. One of two species of pelican found in the USA, the brown pelican is a strictly coastal bird, rarely seen on inland lakes. The other pelican found in the USA is the white pelican, 
which we'll have a look at in a later video. American widgeons are dabbling ducks that can be found throughout North America. They have been known to follow other diving ducks to steal away their food, leading them to sometimes being called robber ducks or poacher ducks. Here's a bird I got some brief looks at in Costa Rica. I didn't get any great photos, so I was hoping to find one here. Let's follow this one, and hopefully it perches for a good look. The Great Blue Heron is the largest heron native to North America. These birds can be found throughout North America and Central America during the winter. They are the third largest heron in the world, surpassed only by the Goliath Heron of Africa and the White-bellied Heron from the Himalayas. I hope you've enjoyed this look at some of the birds from Malibu. 
Give me a like, leave a comment, or if you haven't already, please subscribe. It really does help the channel. My next video will be covering some more birds from a different location in Los Angeles. See you then.